because yes, it did. Does that necessitate that every Iraqi military uh, machine was destroyed? No. Exactly. You see, when when it when it comes when it comes to the Bible, right? Uh, we have people who do not want to submit to the authority of the Bible, nitpicking, splitting hairs, and will apply a standard to the biblical communicators that they don't apply to other writers, not only throughout history, but even contemporarily or themselves. If we applied your, if we applied your standard of evaluation to certain eyewitness accounts in the Gospels, to your everyday speech, if we could hyper-focus on it, we could accuse you of numerous contradictions. Like, for example, for example, I, for example, when I've debated atheists and I say that um, God is unfalsifiable and Christianity is unfalsifiable, then they'll turn to another videotape where somebody said, well, how would you falsify Christianity? And I said, oh, well, you, you know, from your perspective, you know, if you found the dead body, Jesus. And they say, ah, oh, look, he, he, he contradicted himself <laughs> because he says Christianity can't be falsified. But in another video, he said you could falsify. Do you, you, you see how stupid this is? Exactly. This, this is how desperate you are because you are you are motivated by one thing, okay? And that is to retain your own personal autonomy. Because if you don't retain your uh, autonomy, you will surrender it and you will bow to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Scratch me yeah. straws, dude. So when we just deal with certain biblical tasks, we see all, every, blah, blah, blah. You know, once again, it could be hyperbolic. It could be, uh, once again, not coextensive. It can be coextensive, you know, if you actually, you know, ferret that out in the context. But once again, since we see that John was there, um, and Jesus spoke to him, so it wasn't every single apostle. We just know it was the majority of apostles because they're not all there. Yeah, well, that, but that's begging the question of like, how are you sure that it's John? Because he's <laughs> uh, regarding that context. So you need that fair to that a little bit further. Fine, but like you're not refuting everything I gave you regarding the authorship of John, the internal data that testifies. It's really, it's really which, simple, dude. Yeah. Are you are you attempting to undermine the infallibility and inerrancy of the biblical text? Well, I didn't know that that issue turns on like whether John the apostle okay. is the author. Now, are you a, is that your is that your purpose or intent? He's one of his John John. You know, I mean that's it. Right? Do you so here? Let me John. put it this way. Look, look. We don't we don't have to sit there and do meticulous Bible studies to you with you. All I need to know is simply this. Are you familiar with the biblical message from Genesis to Revelation? Yeah, most of it. Okay. Do you accept the Christian worldview? No. Okay. Now, you have an even bigger picture, a big, bigger problem, right? It's because you reject the Christian worldview. That means whatever you say is going to derive its viability and intelligibility from your worldview, okay? Now, if you're going to look down in judgment upon any state of affairs, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, the Encyclopedia Britannica, the New York Times, anything, comic books, right? You're going to do so from your worldview. Your worldview is going to provide for you the basis of intelligibility and, and reason in order to evaluate, adjudicate facts. Now, I'm going to ask you a very simple question. What is it that is ultimate that provides for all possibility and impossibility in your world? I don't know. Well, guess what? You now live in a world of chance. Okay? And if, if chance is ultimate rather than X is ultimate that provides for possibility and possibility, meaning contingency, if chance is ultimate then you have no grounds for intelligibility for even saying the sky is blue. Now, if you don't accept what I just said, then you can tell me how your worldview foundationally provides for the intelligibility of the sky being blue. Can you do that? I guess not on your worldview. No, no, I didn't say on my worldview. Because you reject the Christian worldview, you can only do so in virtue of your worldview. 
Because if you tell me that you don't reject it on your worldview, then you're being completely and utterly arbitrary and irrational. Is your non-acceptance of the Christian worldview a rational rejection or is it irrational and arbitrary? Well, maybe I just don't understand it enough, but I, you know, just is your it. rejection of the Christian worldview on the grounds of rationality? Provisionally, yes, no yeah. question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm saying provisionally. Yeah. No, the other other guys want to ask a question. Oh no, no, I just said it's a yes or no question. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I like to dumb things down. I like to simplify everything to its bare bones, okay? So we don't waste time. There's no confusion. So you are rejecting the, 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 the Christian worldview and other worldviews in virtue of your worldview. If you do not accept A, then you do so only in virtue of not A. Because you hold to not A, that is why you reject A. So the only grounds that you can reject the Christian worldview and any other worldview is in virtue of your worldview. But I just ask you, what is it that's ultimate, that is the all-conditioner, that is the ground of all being that provides for possibility and impossibility? Your answer is, I don't know. No. Now that answer means that for you, contingency is ultimate in other words at your at, in your worldview it's at its most foundational outermost context of why anything exists it's, I mean, it, it just is it just happens which is it's just chance and if chance is ultimate you have no grounds to make any intelligible statements you will think you can make intelligible statements only because either you're unaware or you're unwilling to examine that your worldview cannot provide background information for the intelligibility of the statements that are derived from that background information. So it is impossible, therefore, for you to deny the Christian worldview. Your non-acceptance is not neutrality. It is the denial of the Christian worldview. You cannot be neutral toward any other worldview. Whatever worldview you do not accept, you deny. But the point is, since your position is the denial of the existence of the Christian worldview, it's actuality. But when I ask you what is ultimate, because in the Christian worldview, we have the triune God of the Christian scriptures, his creation, his creation plan, his, his revelatory actions, but you reject all that. But when I ask you what's ultimate that you would need to hold to in order to deny and reject the Christian worldview, you go, well, I don't know. Well, why would somebody like you do that? Well, the answer is very simple. It's because down in your heart, you know that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But you just want to whistle past the graveyard and come up with a pseudo intellectual reason why you don't have to accept it because you love your present world more than you do your eternal destiny. But if you still want to cling to the viability of the denial of the Christian worldview, then on what grounds do you do so? The answer is you have none because you said you don't know what's ultimate. And if you don't know what's ultimate, you have no grounds for intelligibility for anything. Last night I was on with a, a snot-nosed atheist uh, woman, right? Oh, I saw very, that one, I think. Very, very arrogant, very arrogant female atheist on all of the, her, her, the broadcast that she does, right? I said, what is your worldview? You know, you know what this arrogant broad said? She goes, my worldview is I lick cheesecake. No, this no, woman, no. this woman is one of the preeminent atheist YouTube atheists. I, and they, I have 1% they, battery. I'll be right back, though. Yeah, and, the, and they want us to take them seriously? They are all of them, all of the YouTube atheists. They are clowns. It's in virtue of lick cheesecakeism. <laughs> this is one of the elite YouTube atheists, and she's also, elite. quote, elite elite 
in the sense that she's one of the, she has more notoriety and prominence among any of the female YouTube atheists. Only she can, uh, only she can account for the eligibility of sugar and crap. I mean, this, this, this is why I have such contempt for all the internet atheists. They are, they are a joke. They are a clown show. But didn't she say that asking the question of worldview was kind of like a really broad question that would be difficult to articulate? Did you watch the whole video? Well, that's what her first answer was. That's not an answer to my question. Did you watch the whole video? Yes. Okay. After I completed answering her questions about the issue of the soul and the body and how it interfaces, and I answered to the best of my ability and in good faith, I then went on to inquire about her worldview. For the rest of the show, she was nonstop arrogant, obnoxious, rude, evasive, and deceptive and manipulative. Now, do you want to deny that that's what she was? I never made that. No, I don't think. So. Okay, good. So she's a, she's a clown. I have no hesitation to denounce her performance. I told her to her face, your performance here tonight is a complete train wreck. She wants to maintain that they are a atheist on intellectual grounds. Well, last night proved that she's a liar okay okay because when i when i asked her legitimate um circumspect questions about her position she was utterly belligerent and didn't want to answer it she even refused essentially to answer the simplest of questions such as do you believe in causality okay and this is the creme de la creme of atheists, you know, of, 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 uh, in the, the YouTube atheist echelon. Wait, what does she mean by like, she's an elite atheist? What does she mean? That's my descriptor. Okay. She's one oh. of the prominent, she's one of the more prominent vocal YouTube atheists. And beca also because she's female, she stands out. Okay. Wait, how many followers does she have or what? I, I don't know, nor do I care. But I'm just tired of listening to these people like her and others and their arrogance, their conceit, their bloviating on their YouTube shows. They, they, they You know what? They speak with puffed chest. They speak with great ar arrogance. And yet when you get them one-on-one -on -one with a competent Christian, they become a Down syndrome child. Jim is a uh, sixteen thousand subscribers. So. How did you hear about her? How did I hear about her? I, I, I'm a, I'm a regular observer of atheist YouTube, you, YouTube chat shows. And how did I get into contact with her last night? No, no, I was just wondering, like, how did, how were you aware of her? Is it because she was so prominent? I, I just told you, I, I regularly watch a atheist YouTube chat shows. Well, I have to say, Darth, I don't think you should give up on atheist YouTube yet, because she's not like, I mean, there's people who are more prominent than her and who are like, you know, better at arguing than her. She's got like, a I'm, I, I, I'm not, I'm not saying she is the most pro prominent. I said she is among the more highly recognizable atheists, YouTube atheists. I don't really know if that's true. Like the really big ones are like rationality rules or like Thunderfoot <laughs> or Cosmic Skeptic. Like okay, name me. Like, okay, know, know give me, give me the name. Give me the name of one single female atheist YouTuber that has more notoriety than Shannon Q. Oh, when you Jacqueline Glenn. Bring it down to yeah, Jacqueline, Jacqueline Glenn, Glenn comes to mind. Right it's a claim of female. Who? Oh? No, no. Oh? I mean, if, you, if you're narrowing it down to female, that might be fair. Yeah, Jacqueline Glenn. Jen oh, Jacqueline, yeah, Jacqueline Glenn? Glenn? I've never even heard of her. She, she's, she's a lot bigger, but there's no reason to think she'd be any better at arguing. 
maybe, maybe even Bionic Dance is more known. Than- she's not really known for her, like, uh, she's more, like, not into, like, really arguing atheism, though. She kind of just makes these, like, typical, like, low-tier videos. I think as far as like regular, as far as like regular argumentation is concerned, I think you may be right to point out. Yeah, you can't forget Godless Girl. That's the best argument. <laughs> Who's that? She's a completely unknown. Like, I'm just saying that there are people who can argue better than her. I don't think that. I don't think there's anyone. Well, I don't know. Really? Who? 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 Okay, well, people who I'd put up right away would probably... The first person I'd think of would be Cosmic Skeptic. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what. Get, let's get it so we... Okay, good, good. So we're going to so we're gonna get Cosmic Skeptic to come into your, to your server, and um, you can moderate, and I'll do a one-on-one with him. I will actually try, but it might not be easy. I tried... Um, yeah. I also am going to try Rationality Rules, because they're both, like, sort of... They're bigger, but they're also better arguers. Well, while you're at I it, hope you, I, I hope rationality rule. rule. I hope I hope I, w- I hope rationality rule rule shampoos his hair before he comes in. Well, I, I'm sure you, judging by the debate yesterday, can't find the claim that there's better debaters out there that uh, that extreme. What do you think it would be better though, cosmic skeptic or rationality rules? I think probably cosmic skeptic. No, like, oh, absolutely yeah. not. I've watched his programs. Yeah, yeah. I think Cosmic he's not. He is not. Listen to me. Not impressive at all. Look, I'm not saying he's good, but I'm saying out of the YouTube atheists, he's probably the best. Of well, I, yeah, I was talking I'm about between Cosmic yeah, Skeptic between and Rational 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 Rational. Rational. Yeah, I think I think Cosmic is a bit more like deep into the philosophy world than Rationality Rules. So probably Cosmic out of the two. Good. Good then I look forward to interacting with him because it, it seems to be the view that he's he's far more talented than what I have witnessed. Well, the best we'll, we'll, we'll put the feelers out. We'll, we'll see what the, best would, the best person would need to have some sort of an explanation or understanding of what is like what reality comes from and some sort of explanation around that and be able to address that and contradict what uh, Darth is saying because it seems like a lot of atheists don't actually do that. They don't commit to any metaphysics. I mean, they like, don't want to. Like, one of his accolades is that he did debate Frank Turk. Are you talking about that in studio dialogue? Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, like, a cosmic skeptic did debate Frank Turk. He was on like a radio awesome. show or something like that? I think Frank Turk is pretty cool, pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. I guess I guess uh, quite the job done. I don't like how he's sympathetic to evolution. He seems to be sim- very sympathetic to evolution and mm-hmm. Earth. Yeah, he's similar to Craig. No, I think Craig actually just outright accepts it, though. I don't know if Turk has outright accepted evolution or not. Well, I'm not saying that, but he just seems to be a, a younger version of Craig with his evidentialist arguments and. If Craig, if Craig openly accepted uh, creationism, uh, he he would not have many of the venues that he does in, on secular, um, you know, um, locations. Do you think that he actually internally does affirm creationism and is just like putting on a show, or do you think he truly believes that in evolution? I think he's sympathetic to it. Um, but I think he won't come out and full blown say that he believes it lest he receive the ire of many Christians. Look, I, look, I have a lot of respect for Craig. I've learned a lot from him in terms of theology, philosophy. I'm still reading a number of his books and plan to do so. But when he was asked, do you know for certain God exists in a debate in front of an audience? And he said, no. Well, that just told me all I needed to know. Because he doesn't hold to a revelational epistemology. It's, he holds to this, like, uh, almost like a classic. He seems to be at least... No, no, he's theory. holding to an unbiblical epistemology because he's holding to something more absolute than God himself. Which are his first principles. Yeah, yeah exactly. In an apologetic encounter, even though faithfully, you know, I affirm him as a Christian, he's just not being... He's just, just, just not bringing the full Christian worldview to bear 
in his apologetic encounters. That's just where he just jumps out of it uh, for the time being. You know, I think he's a true believer. He's just, this is what, <clears throat> you know, differentiates uh, presuppositionalists from classicalists and evidentialists. We're not, um, we're not saying the evidence is bad or anything. We're just saying you didn't put it within the right framework. You just kind of go, exactly. well, let's, let's step on some neutral ground. Let's just talk about the evidence. I'm not really arguing for Christianity. I'm just arguing for a God. And we go, that's the wrong use of the evidence that you're using because you know it's derived from the Christian worldview. Why not just argue for the whole Christian That That's the problem, the inconsistency there, where they chose to go, well, you know, we'll get you there eventually, but let's just start here. You're never going to get there on that apologetic uh, base. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Whoa, what was that all about? It's a, it's a joke yeah. from last okay. night. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's what she said to him. That was but that I, was actually, that was Shannon Q's imbecilic way of getting around actually having a conversation. Was that debate between that you game. and her recorded? Yeah. Yes. A modern day debate. I would love to listen. I'm going to YouTube that right oh, now. Oh, watch, watch it. Break out the popcorn. Just don't put too much in your mouth because you'll choke. I'm going to play a clip from it here. Is it on your Stop channel? Or is it on her channel? It's on. It, go to YouTube, Modern Day Debate. Someone will post the link shortly. It's in the chat room. There it is. All right, I'm watching this right now. <laughs> I'm going to play a clip from it because I got to the point where she just completely busted out laughing. It's like crazy. Um, where, it, starts out, it starts out okay yeah. because she's questioning me. And I, in good faith and in cordiality, tried to answer all of her questions and show deference to her. But when it came time for me to ask her some questions, she was rude, obnoxious, deceptive, evasive. By the way, if you're looking at that picture right there, if you look closely on her lip, there's a little white spot. That's cheesecake. Because <laughs> that's her worldview. She said, I asked her, what is your worldview? What is ultimate in your worldview? She goes, my worldview is I lick cheesecake. The, the <laughs> comment section on this video is kind of rough. Are you ready for well, the clip? Well, that, that's, be, that, that's because we have a lot of uh, moron atheists who can't think straight. Oh, well, no, they were in your face. Answer, dude. Oh, I'm, I'm, commenting about, I'm commenting about the hostile atheist remarks. Well, I haven't seen any of those. Oh, they're there. Yeah, they're in the. Oh, I'm already that. reading the comments section, and it's always like, Darth doesn't even understand his own rhetoric. <laughs> well, what I'd like my friends and acquaintances to do take any one of those people who are castigating me in the text, contact them, and saying, You have strongly criticized Darth. Would you be willing to come on modern debate and confront him? Now, let's see if any of them respond. Any of them. Any of who? Any of the atheists who, um, you know, were critiquing how badly I was beaten by Shannon Q. I don't know what program they were watching. Maybe they were high at the time. <laughs> but down the Did you give them a link to this Discord? or No. Oh. By the way, most of those people are familiar with me. They know where I hang out. All right, no, bro, we're, we're just, we're just going to be we're just going to be continue um, getting used to listening to cricket sound. Yeah. All right. Here you go. Is an indirect denial. Are you aware of that? Fascinating phrasing. Are you aware of that? Affirms that what you just stated is fact, and that. In my response, are you, when you are you aware of it? <laughs> wow, you your dialectic you approach is uh, ultimate is really really fascinating. Like your choices, like when you say, "Are you aware of that?" You're affirming what yeah. I just are said is accurate. Are you aware that you I was actually no? Like because it wasn't really a question. Question. It was it was yeah. a veiled assertion, okay. which is really really fascinating. Okay, so can you, you uh, can you ask like, me the okay, same okay, question without "Are you aware of that?" at the end? Shannon, That's an actual you can question. Stop with the shtick, Shannon. You can stop with the. You think I stick. have a shtick? That's amazing. Oh okay, well, yeah, okay, so well, that, well, that's, well, that's, well, that's well, what that well, question well, sounds well, like. Is well, that well, you're well, a? I mean, I mean, she's border, she's borderline demented. 
it keeps going. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you were cordial to her and answering her questions, and I'm sure plenty of them were leading questions, and like she was guilty of the very thing she was accusing you That's of doing. What I the, really has you know, online commentary. We, we were doing live in here in Discord. As it was taking place, we were commenting on it. I said she's being a hypocrite the entire time. Every every single time she I asked her, I asked <laughs> her four <laughs> or five times, "Do you believe in causality?" And she essentially refused to answer the question. You're leading me. You're manipulating me. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. It's because it's rich. She 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 realized that she entered into the wrong conversation with the wrong person. And she knew that if she started answering the questions truthfully, she was going to be in a whole bag of philosophical and theological hurt. And she didn't want to go there. So what she did in her devious, deceitful, and evil manner was to try to make me look like I'm the one who's psychologically deranged. And I'm trying to manipulate her. Isn't it funny? You're, you're, you're truly on the dark side, man. Your name is dark for crying out loud. You're an evil master manipulator. I find it funny that, like, before the debate, Darth was, like, very... Like, before the debate happened, she was like, oh, he, he, Darth, you seem to be very fond of her. Like, not fond, but you know what I mean? Like, you didn't have a problem with her, and now afterwards you really... No, she her. showed her true colors last night. She revealed what she's really like there. It's just how women are, I guess. She's a sleaze bag. Okay, I'm not saying that because she merely gave me a hard time, but because she she was resorted to such sleazy tactics yeah, to standards. say that I had some type so, some type of psychological disturbance and I'm you know some Machiavelli and trying to psychologically manipulate like I'm a Sven, <laughs> like I'm a Svengali or something. I mean, wow. Well, I. I just looked at we are Sith Lord, channel, by the way. and I, I wouldn't consider to hate for her to be prominent if she's only capping like at two thousand views per video. Is that her capping? No, no, no. I, I, I'm saying it's not the numbers; it's how well known how well known she is. Yeah, I'm sure there are some female atheist YouTubers that may have greater subscription bases, but you can have that people doesn't... debating, you know, low hanging fruit for like. You know, umpteen number of videos to get a lot of views. She, she, you know, dealt with Saitan Kate, uh, at least Yeah, you're also people, confusing. Yeah. You're also confusing her channel. She makes many appearances on channels that are not her own. Right. Is that profit? Profit. What's up, buddy? What's up, bro? Been a minute, dude. It's been like ten years. Like, I, I, oh, how ten are the kids months. Here? Ten months, but who's counting? Oh boy! Well, ten years is to the Lord like ten months. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Bible verse? Isn't there a Bible verse that says something like that? That's yeah, that's a joke. Oh, no, but there is. There I'm is making fun of the day agers. Second uh, Peter three video is only like oh, okay. a year old. So what what is it? Second Peter months. three. Yep. Second like period three eight, I believe. Hey Darth, why? What happened with politics to this court? Because I kind of lost contact after you got. I don't know if you left. Uh, or I quit for about the fourth time because of persistent and chronic mod abuse. Something Doobie said that he would put a stop to, and he kept on appointing people who had no business being mod mods. Uh, not so much for their intellectual capacity, but because of their their character and their demeanor. They're just low lives, right? These, so the, the, and, I, left, I left politics recently for that same reason. Okay, just too many low lives. And then I, I would complain to Doobie. Sometimes he would tell me he would do something about it. Well, the last time was the last straw because two of the mods who were, just, you know, you know, uh, two, two little mental midgets specifically went after me in another room simply to target me, right? And I said to him, are you speaking to me as a mod or as a participant? He says, as a participant. And I said, then I don't care what you say, right? And then they, then they went into full-blown mod, mod abuse. When I finally, uh, a week or two later, when Doobie finally responded to me, right, 
he blamed me, said I was being a prima donna and said that they were justified in their behavior. And I just, I just, I, I had enough. So I left. Gotcha. Wait, are you talking about the Tom Rabbit video? Mm-mm. No, I'm talking about the politics, the politics server, the doobie runs. The Paul mods on here are much better because they don't show up at all. <laughs> yeah, I remember the last scuffle that I remember you got in with the mods. One of them was actually laughing that the trolls were pissing you off and they like encouraged it. And I'm like, dude, as a mod, yeah. it doesn't matter. This happened like, regularly. Yeah, like, oh, like it doesn't matter how much you dislike someone. Like, you got a job to do, and it's to maintain order in the Discord. All right. Wait, do Discord servers make money? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Some. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what people call me out my name, like the N word and stuff, and they literally did nothing about it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's clearly like. The, the politics discord obviously leans to one side of the conversation. So profit. Do you remember, do you remember London? Uh, vaguely. The guy who was talking about how much he loved naturalism. Cause it had utility. <laughs> they made him a mod now. He's a mod now. Oh my God. Is he hey, the but guy? He's a British guy. <laughs> Wait, can London, any belief system, London, or philosophical seven. belief system provide you? Well, his clearly didn't, because not very intelligent. I remember that, what was that, that one guy that, that sounded like an African warlord? The guy who was like, listen, are you saying that you have Beyonder. a prince of Beyonder? Beyonder. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I have no beliefs, I have proclivities. I don't want to talk about the contradiction. Okay? okay, okay, no, Duncan. No, okay, I don't have beliefs. I don't know anything. Okay, that's how he talks. No, no, he's two things. He's a troll, and he's fundamentally stupid. Okay. <laughs> Jonathan, for a also second. Also quite entertaining, though. evidence, okay? Jonathan, I thought when you said London, I thought you were saying Beyonder became a mod. That's why I was laughing. No, but I, apparently they asked. Um, they asked. Now, this might not be true. I, someone told me that they heard Doobie or somebody ask Ninclau if he wanted to be a mod, but Ninclau oh, denied. What? Okay. <laughs> oh, Ninclown. The guy who can barely put two sentences together. But I, uh, well, I, I won't criticize him for that. I think he has pretty decent and pretty good English, especially, especially someone who can speak another. I can't, I can't speak, speak another language. language. Okay, fa- fair enough. The, my problem with that server is that the people they promote, they tend to lean one way in the conversation. They try very hard to hide it, but it's so transparent, like which side of the conversation is going to be favored. At least that's the vibe that I got when I was. You think they try? I didn't hear what you said. Honestly, I said, do you think that they try? Yeah. Like, they, they just like if, honestly, at this point, they've almost pretty much just given up, even really feeling like they need to try and. Have- yeah, what are you gonna do? Um, <clears throat> one of the mods that came that um that was doing like Darth was talking about those two mods. One of them's name was Lee, and she. The doobie apparently tried so hard to defend her, but then like uh, like a, like not even a month after Darth left the server, she's not even a mod anymore. Ox is still a mod, but Leaf isn't. What was that name of that one mod? Um, she was at, she's kind of like I don't she's either Irish or Scottish. I don't remember her name. Um, but she seemed to be the only mod that was on top of her stuff. Oh, you mean A to the K? A to the K. Yeah, she at least. Uh, like she was the only mod who whose even handedness I kind of believed. Like the rest of the mods kind of pretended to be even handed, but she like seemed to make a genuine effort. Look at people myself. like Vive, Chad, Chad King, King, Killjoy, you know, most Mosties, all these Muslim mods. Dude, you know those Muslim mods are all deputy admins now. Yeah, no, I don't know that. I haven't gone on that server. There's like no Christian mods. Like there's like I think there's there's like. There's there's one that I can think of, and then there was Ellipsis, but he wasn't even a mod. He was a founder, but now he's not a founder anymore. Well, I remember the last time I got into an argument with the Muslims, 
um, they kind of made a point. Like I, I was, I don't remember the point I made, but they kind of went on a little tirade. And then when I, before I could respond, they muted me. They wanted to have like a mic drop moment where it's just like they quote unquote own me. And then they just ride off into the sunset with their fake victory. And I'm just like, these are the people who you're going to make mods, people who just say their piece, pretend like they win and then just mute and then mute you to like, I just, I, I lost. That's when I stopped going to that server. Because I'm like, you're going to put people oh, like this. And I troll still go on there and I troll. That's what I do on there. Oh, I troll people. Yeah. And I listen to Mr. Batman tell people about how they don't know about Yeshua Mashiach. <laughs> I, I like Mr. Batman. It's so funny seeing him oh, talk to you. Here is his new beliefs. He doesn't believe in the Trinity, really. What? <laughs> yeah, he believes he he. When you ask him, he says, "I believe God is at least a duality, and he thinks the Holy Spirit is more of a force than a person." person. And he, affirms he affirms that there could be more than three persons. Like there could be like uh, hundreds of persons to God. Hundreds of per oh, okay. So, All right. Yeah. Hey, he's surpassing Benny Hinn, who says there's like nine. Well, where's the bi I just okay. What's the biblical <laughs> basis? His his two arguments. Don't try to make sense out of it. Yeah. Mr. Um, Batman, one of his arguments is that it the Holy Spirit is never referred to as a he, which is not true. Uh, it's never referred to as a person. And then mm -hmm. his other argument for the thing about there being more, he says in the book of Revelation, when it talks about the spirits of God, that those could that that's the same thing as when it talks about the Holy Spirit, or that it could be that. Wow. Got you. Hey, he's refuted by 1 Corinthians 12, 11. I think he's just to look in the find the most unbiblical views just to sound like he has some like knowledge that nobody else i mean it's a flimsy theory at best I mean, can you repeat that verse matt uh first corinthians what 12 11 okay let me read that i'm gonna pull it up uh so it's talking about the charismatic gifts in first corinthians chapter 12 but one in the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually just as he wills Gotcha. Yeah. Oh no, I, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. That's not talking about the Holy Spirit. That's talking about Yahovah. What's the argument for that? <laughs> uh. mm, Jack and Mr. Batman sounds fun. I missed you guys. <laughs> God, Somebody actually it. paid money to ask a question in the debate yesterday if I would debate Jack Angstrom. I know. That was amazing. Not to be stupid, you and me. He's some forty-year-old unemployed Jewish guy who likes Marx. Basically. I don't know, what are you doing? Like what? five bucks or what? No, 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 no. You left out. You left out prostitutes. Wait, yeah. what's his name? Mar I, I Jack Angstrich, or as Matt Slick wonderfully called him, Jack Angstrich. <laughs> yeah, Angstrich. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I think even James was butchering it last night when he tried to say his name. What do you call him, Jack? Ostrich. Uh, the last time I was in the same the same time the last time I was in the same room with Matt Slick and Angstrike, uh Matt Slick goes, Hey Jack, you knock over any old ladies in movie theaters lately? <laughs> Does he have like a YouTube or any Twitter? No, but if you want to see what this but this this is this guy has been stalking me on the internet for ten years, okay? Go on to YouTube, type in the word Cinemania, C I N E Mania. Look for the look look for the guy with long no, there it is. Somebody posted it. Godless girl uploaded that to her channel. <laughs> there you go. Watch both of those. That's all you need to know. Yeah, so uh, Godless Girl and Tom Rabbit are the two channels that they have stuff on. They stream from their like from the servers. That they have. we have been filming in politics uh, a little while back um, when Darth was in. There. Hmm. If you watch Trancing in the Cognitive, he goes around all over New York City stealing uh, hand 
you know, sanitizer stuff. <laughs> what? It's not, it's not a joke. Watch, Watch the video. The <laughs> Why? Look at the Church of Darth. All the things to steal hand sanitizer. I don't know. Look at that guy. Can you tell me what his position is by looking at him? <laughs> no, you said some guy's been following you around to debate you or something? No, somebody paid money to ask a question yesterday when I was in the online debate with Shannon Q-Tip. Paid money to ask you to debate him? Yeah, super chat. They just get prominence of having their question or statement stated or asked in the uh, online debate during the uh, Q&A session. So only the people that donate a super chat, you know, get their uh, thing read. So one person just, they paid money to ask that question. Hey, we need to debate Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he asked. Who deleted the uh, picture of Jack? Uh, I did. I don't know if it would would it be considered uh, like doxing if it's from that video. It's it's just a no, no, no. Jack, video. Jack, 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 Jack. No, 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 it would. Jack, Jack um, gives. He, Jack has been giving out his identity over ten years, going back to Pal Talk. Oh, okay, I'll repost it then. I think people were saying Jack was trying to dox you today, Dark. Uh, Jack is obsessed with me. Okay, he was posting your he was posting your supposed information in the chat. On Suppos YouTube. supposedly, this is what Jack does. Well, this guy just seems like a nobody to me. Yeah, the other it? night, the other night I, I was watching a live stream on Godless Girl's channel, and it was about some drama with Big Chum Time and this this horror girl, and like. But Jack was asking other men as like a joke, like how you know, about their genitalia, like weird stuff, man. Really degenerate, yeah. reprobate. I mean, dedicating a decade of your life. I mean, a whole decade of your life to trying to take down one guy. Well, I mean, years I, <laughs> that's one thing. That's one thing that kind of makes me pay attention to what you say, Darth. Is that. It's not just that it resonates, and I think it makes sense, but also because it incenses the atheist community so much that they spend so much energy. When you're not going around hurting people, you're going around refuting their point, and they feel I'm, so. I'm going around talking. Yes, you're not hurting people, but they're but they're <laughs> trying okay, to hurt okay. you. So it's like you're saying to them, you are saying something that's dangerous. That's how they view it. That's why they're trying to harm you, because it's like he's trying to harm me by telling me by robbing me of this viewpoint or making diminishing what? credibility of this viewpoint. So I'm like, okay. By the uh, way, I have not gone on record record the extent of his stalking. Okay. Right. But on another topic, I'm curious, what's your whole opinion with Donald Trump and Iran? That whole debacle. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in total support of Trump's policy so far. Right. I was, I, was, I, was, I was giddy with joy, with no exaggeration, that he killed that bastard. You and Iran both. Well, the people with at least he should have been he should have been killed a long time ago. Oh, I, I guess, guess that he that he did it with Trump, like that, or that they did it. There was an agreement between uh, Iran and Trump to get rid of him. What what you guys probably don't know is that they had an elite um, commando team that was yards from the strike location. And as soon as it was struck, they, 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 they moved in. They uh, used something to stop his body from burning and took samples, photographs, tried to retrieve any material for intelligence. I see. And there's another guy, I believe, who was in another country. It may have been Yemen that they targeted, but he missed. He's, he's, he's one of the elite terrorist fin fi financiers. Um, uh, and he's obviously in hiding. He's probably quaking in his boots. Do you think we're uh, going to be in another war with Iran? Or not another war, but be at war with Iran? 
I think it's going to be inevitable that either the United States and or Israel is going to attack the nuclear facilities because these nutbags are not going to stop refining uranium in order to build a weapon. Now, there may be the collapse of the regime. Trump is putting even more um, draconian um, sanctions on them. The protests are getting bigger and bigger over there about the uh, about the regime. So, pending if we if we don't see the collapse of the regime internally, and they still stay in power, and they're they're continuing to try to build a nuclear weapon, it's just a matter of time. I see. We're oil independent, by the way. That was another message in this. Like we, we can well, I don't know how that could be because that genius President Jimmy Carter said in the in 1970s, in 35 years, we're gonna, the whole world will run out of oil. He, 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 the gas runs happened under him, right? That was like... Hmm. Well, that was, the, like, that, that was the Arab oil embargo. Look, it, it's, it's Jimmy Carter's fault that we're dealing with the Iranian regime. You know, anybody who had a brain would have tried to facilitate that the crazy religious Muslims not take over in Iran, which is a very strategic place in the, in, in the Middle East. But he basically turned his back on the Shah of Iran. Okay? What they should have done is they should have assassinated Ayatollah Khomeini. And we, we might not be in the present predicament that we're in today. Why is Iran a strategic place in the Middle East as opposed to the other countries? Well, it, their location and, and the fact that they have oil. Okay. They're not look. They're they're now they're now threatening. They, I mean, they attack the oil fields of the Saudis. The scout the Saudis are terrified of the Iranians. I was, I was watching, a, uh, are the Iranians a part of OPEC? I don't know. I watched a video of an alleged Iranian stealth aircraft, and the guy pointed out, <laughs> he pointed out markings on the plane about what the air pressure on the tires are to be inflated to, and he says, look at the air pressure that the tires are to be inflated to on the side of the plane. He says that's indicating that the plane is basically hollow <laughs> because a modern fighter would be of a certain amount of tonnage and it would require a very specific amount of air pressure in the tires. So they brought out a plane that they said was a new stealth aircraft and basically it was just a glorified uh, model. I'm surprised that they even fired those missiles um, because for all they know, tr Trump could have gone bombs away. Well, that's, how, that's how that's how crazy they are. But the thing is, they didn't kill anyone. So I'm wondering if they missed on purpose because they can't be that bad. I, oh, I believe so. But the point is. As far as the Trump Trump is concerned, from their point of view, he's unpredictable. Right. Okay. So do you so do you do you want to be crazy enough and roll the dice so he starts sending the B fifty two bombers over your strategic sites? Yeah, that's not, crazy. Not too bright. What do you think? Uh, the plane. Do you think that was us or them? I know they claim to take it out. Oh, it's most definitely they did it. Yeah, and they. I love CNN's calling it a crash. The plane crash. Yeah, what? what it crashed into a missile. The missile yeah, had the right of way. That's absurd, dude. That's just terrible. The missile had the right of way in the sky, and they didn't get. Out of the oh, I've got the, I've got my new nickname for Shannon. It's Shannon. I lick cheesecake. Q. That doesn't roll off the tongue as well as you think. No, it no, it doesn't. But it. it, it... <laughs> okay, you guys.
I mean, she was a crazy woman. Listen to her. That laugh is one second. One second. Where does the Bible talk about Wait a minute, let's stop right there. I don't know why you're bothering me. Hey, yeah. hey, listen, Broad, you were asked if you wanted to come on and talk with me, and you agree. <laughs> yeah, that clip good. is just great. There's that that's that real cross light right there where it just went crazy. It's 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 priceless. Oh. It's absolutely priceless. It, and by the way, all that laughter was fake. It was all a performance. If you could debate somebody, who would it be? Like, if you had your choice. I'll talk with any atheist. No, if you had your choice, though. Anyone. Give me any atheist. Well, I don't care. No, no. Oh, Darth, Darth, Darth. So, like, you, you don't have any preference as to who who's who atheist like you no, like I to don't. talk to. I have no, I have no pre, uh, I have no preference because they're all in the same predicament. It doesn't matter how intelligent or educated they are. Darth, what they about Ninclaw? What about Ninclaw? <laughs> no, he scares me. <laughs> You're not scared of any man. No, no. If you were given the cool choice predator, of right? being able to debate yeah. any atheist, who would you choose? Oh, I would. I would quickly write down twenty of the top atheist YouTubers out there and systematically go through them one by one. No, just one of them, though. Who would you choose? Oh, um, if I only could choose one, Matt Dillabloviator. <laughs> and would your preferable <laughs> mode of doing that be on Discord or on a call? Like on the atheist experience. No, because no, because he he would kick me off the show. He would shut me down. Um, I wouldn't want it to be a formal debate either, um, because he you know he he dodges he you know he uh, uh, he you know he river dances away from answers like he did with cited program gate. I would want it to be a moderated one on one dialogue back and forth, yeah. kind of like moderated. kind of like similar to what happened with. Um, Jay Dyer. Yeah, just do like an atheist raffle. Like you got a certain amount of names in the hat that you haven't uh, debated yet. You take one look, out. Look, I was asked to make an opening statement. Okay, <clears throat> I could have prepared, you know, um, a really well written, well thought out ten minute introduction. I didn't need to. I did it in sixty seconds. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm not knocking people who make a more well prepared statement. Like for example, Eli when he was debating against um, uh, Cirrus and, and Eric, Eric Murphy, you know, he, he gave a very good academic introduction. But I don't think that's always needed, right? Because it goes over their head anyway. It doesn't matter. They don't, they don't respond to what you say anyway. Did, did Shannon respond to anything I said last night, folks? Let's see if she did. This is her response. Do you think I have? Such a fake laugh. Oh, we can take it. I'd like to know why my her sound volume was louder than mine. Uh, it's just the way it came through on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, She's definitely a lot louder, yeah. Well, I, I think she was actually exactly. deafening you. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, yeah, that's why I'm wondering who recorded it. it. Was it her who recorded it? No, it was James of Modern Debate. <sighs> we were wondering why your sound quality wasn't the same as it usually is. I don't, I don't know why, because I have my sound volume cranked up. Well, Next time, I'm going to make sure it's at its loudest. Do you have a YouTube channel or anything? No. Uh, he does. It's Darwin's Greatest Hits. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> No, really, do you? No, you no. but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I was waiting for it, thanks. Why don't you have a YouTube channel where you can, like, kind of have these open to the public for people that don't have a chance to talk to you? Uh, because all one has to do is do a search on Darth Dawkins or Duncan Atheism, and you can find the videos. 
No, but you'd be able to articulate it instead of like just posing debates. That oh, I people I plan on like, doing so in the in the future. I'm just not interested in doing it right now, given my present responsibilities. Okay. I'm not I'm not opposed to that idea. Not do YouTube videos either. I just don't have the time for it. I just like have a dialogue with people on here in Google Hangouts when they were pretty prolific. I mean, it, it would be helpful for you, Darth, because people would just assume who you are based on what Tom Rabbi or people post, you know? It would give, like, you a better... I don't, think, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think people are fooled at all about the, the attack videos that they do on me. Okay? Yeah. It's, it's the, it's the people, idea... Especially when they, they just weren't up to snuff of the usual self, but that the other... Points where they were up to their usual self are clearly out there. So wait, is Laura Blizzard, Ingram uh, a trans? The only people no, no, she's not. Are, the only people, <laughs> who, the only people who are not so stupid videos are those dumb uh, commenters that live vicariously through the big name. Yeah. Who Tonlock? Yeah, like the people on those videos that like the, the attack videos you do. I, I'm just alluding to the people who care about them. Who, you, you, can, you talk about the people who can see through that crap. I said the only people who actually really care are just the people who live by care to do like the Shannon Q's and the rational rationality rules and people like that. These people count on these victims to argue for them because they can't argue for themselves. Yeah, rationality rules creeps me out. I'm he's just, sorry, Darth. He, That's he, the begging the question fallacy. He's, he's, he's just—he's just a creepy dude. <laughs> he has a weird voice too. Can't really pin it. He's no Hitchens. Oh. He just had a more proper British accent. <laughs> <laughs> There's three things I said about him, and I forget one of them, but the other two I can remember is uh, he's a good talker, and he has great video editing. Who? Oh. Rat rules. Yeah, Tonlock, man, your sound quality's bad. <laughs> oh, no. God damn it, Tonlock, I told you. You know what it might have, every once in a while, man. What, what what it may have been my sound quality yesterday, it may have switched to the mic on my AirPods. It does that something. I think they deliberately turned you down a little bit. Yeah, I'm turning you down. I'm gonna turn you down. Now. What's the what's the argument for that? <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. Like every... I'm not seeing the relevance. Yeah, excuse me. I'm talking. I'm talking. I don't know what it is, man. Like most Shannon, of these people that I see on Discord, you think I have a Jeez. <laughs> my ears already <laughs> hurt. That, 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 that's, that's priceless. Weird. That's priceless, dude. It's yeah, like it's like nails on a chalkboard oh. when she laughs. Well, wait, wait till wait till you watch the whole thing. Oh, yeah. dude. All right, I'll put in some earplugs. Wait. Wait till you get to the very end where I tell her right to her face. You're sleazy, and your performance here tonight has been a complete train wreck. I, I swear that life is going to become a me. Right there. Start like 53, 54. Just go onwards. Anybody that thinks that like self-righteous indignation is an argument, like I'm already like, what? Well, I already don't trust you. I, I really, I haven't heard her argue, but I already know it's going to be nonsense based on the fact that she uses indignation instead of using sense. Like, it, let's well, I say called you, her out. She, she was hurling psychobabble and psychoanalysis rather than have a dialogue. I'm asking you questions about your view. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, it's like. And people, like the ball, atheists ball. are so worried about being trapped. And it's like, look, if you're trying to get to the truth of your philosophy, you're going to want to be trapped because the trap is going to expose a weakness in your argument. Either you're going to answer the trap and get out of it and have a rebuttal, or you're going to have to come to terms that your philosophy is inconsistent. Why are they scared of traps? It's only because they don't want to discover the truth about it. Yeah, Does anybody remember... 
Does anybody remember what kind of a deist she said she went? She she kept on flip flopping from saying she's a colloquial atheist uh, to temporal, type of a temporal deist. agnostic. Yeah, colloquial a, atheist. A temp- temporal wait a minute, a temporal agnostic deist. What the hell is that? Well, I, guess, I guess she's right though, because when she dies, it, she yeah. won't be agnostic. So her time as an agnostic is limited in temporal. Talk about double talk. Well, no, she apparently, according to this guy, he said she never claimed to be a deist. That was a temporal agnostic, I believe she said. She said she, so, she said you atheist, could temporal agnostic. She, she Look, said you she could get her regularly. Name. She regularly presents herself on all the on all of her YouTube channels as an atheist. Okay, she never says of herself that I am aware of that she's some kind of temporal agnostic deist crap. Whatever that means. She tried to get out of it because I was pointing out to her. That when you lack belief in God, God is a worldview. And in whatever worldview you lack belief in, you deny. And then I said to her, do you understand that? Are you aware of that? And then she tried to turn that as to some uh, patronizing statement. Well, yeah, the reason why I think it would be a good idea for you to get like a YouTube or something going so that you can garner that following that would demonstrate to other prominent figures in the atheist community that you are worth debating kind of thing. Because if you just kind of hang around Discord, nobody's going to really... No, they know I'm worth debating. They just don't want to. I wonder if Cosmic Skeptic or Rationality Rules have heard of you or are aware of who you are. I I, I don't know be interesting to see it. hopefully i'm sure ask yourself has a pretty big channel you should be able to reach out well not only that is if you, you turn out to like make money doing this this would be a noble cause i mean like you can dedicate more of your time to doing it while making income doing exactly what would be of utmost uh, dude i'm not a, uh, listen you're preaching to the choir i'm not opposed to it i'm just not going to do it right at this moment in my time of life Maybe sometime in the near future. I'm all for that. We're just horrible, horrible uh, marketers. <laughs> Matt, do you have a channel? I have a channel, I, but I don't post stuff regularly. I swear, that. she threw in the word "deist." Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find the the point where she uh, brought that up. I'm trying to find it now. She but, she yeah. said that you could get her to. Be an agnostic, well, a deist, or whatever. I was like, so she, she didn't what like. What does it mean to be a temporal agnostic? Yeah, I think she just doesn't understand. I think she's just a temporal idiot, to be honest. I'm gonna Google that. She's opposed to spiritual affairs. That's what it basically means. So she only believes in the temporal realm. Nothing is coming up. Let's hear no, it for the temporal. Well, the temporal agnosticism is normally, well, it says the view that the existence or non-existence of any deities is currently unknown, but is not necessarily unknowable. Therefore, one will withhold judgment until evidence, if any, becomes available. So I think what she's saying is, well, prove it to me and I will. Oh, okay. So basically, okay. So basically what she was doing was she was hiding behind uh, nomenclature and double talking. Right? Yeah. It's just another way to say agnostic. Yeah, well, yeah. Why don't you, yeah. People would agree with that, saying, I don't know something and I'm willing to accept any claims if they. Un- unfortu- unfortunately, upon analysis, that is an incorrect personal assessment that they're making of themselves, right? Because you cannot be neutral toward God as a worldview. Okay? You either, you either accept. I found it. The, okay. You either accept the creator-creation distinction, or you deny it. You cannot be neutral toward it. Okay? That's the fatal flaw of agnosticism. Go ahead, Matt. All right, one second here. Just give me a few more seconds to queue it up. I can't get precisely, but just give it a little run time here, and then she brings it up. But I wouldn't worship that god, because whatever. Like, if, 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 if there was some sort of deism or pantheism, then, it's like, you could propose that to me, and it would potentially make sense. And I would say, so are no, you abandoning sure, your atheism right now? Have you now converted to a deist? No, I, I'm probably like if if we're looking philosophically, I'm probably more of a temporal sort of agnostic. 
that I am an atheist? Well, agnosticism is indirect atheism. Okay. Sure. Okay. Fine. Okay, I'm, so like, I'm, you, you, I'm you suspending call, judgment you on the yourself, proposition. You're not. And, you're not suspending judgment on it. I'll, I'll explain to you why. Oh, I'm going to ask okay. you a simple question. Sure. Do you affirm and assert that God, a personal absolute creator, is the necessary precondition of all facts? Do well, you, you just said a that? personal absolute creator, though. That wouldn't be a deistic perspective, and that's kind of like okay. smuggled okay. in there a little bit. I think. Okay, Shannon, you're evading the question. No, you, you said you personal, assert? but we were talking about deism, and you're yeah, attempting Shannon. to refute agnosticism. Okay. The personal one, yeah, I refute that. Right. No, personal, for sure. Okay. So you do not assert that God is the necessary prerequisite for all facts. God in general? No, I, whatever. No, no. You don't assert that. Okay, good. Then, then facts are viable and intelligible without the necessity of God. That's your position. Sure, with or without, whatever. Okay, mm -hmm. that's an outright denial of the existence of God. I so said with or without. That, that's not an outright denial. That's a suspension. No, no. Let me explain to you why that's incorrect. That's a common mistake. Right. Okay. You can people say, oh, well, I'm not saying I don't know. I asked you a very specific question. I said, do you assert and affirm that God is the necessary prerequisite for all facts? And you said no. Is that correct? No. Do you assert and affirm that God is the necessary prerequisite for all facts? Yes, I did. Yes, I do. How do you know that? OK, he revealed it. Now, do you assert that God is the necessary prerequisite for all facts? Oh, my gosh. Do I assert that God is, uh, no, I don't, but you do because he okay. revealed it to you, right? No, okay, so I'm no, going to, sure. this, this is going to be fun. Let's, I'm going like to assume your perspective. I'd like okay. to finish. You want to finish where you're leading me you're to? Being, this is a getting, manipulation getting, tactic. Which, which, no, it's not manipulation. You can stop. No, it really is. Yeah. You're, you're, you're leading right me right towards you're your rude. desired okay. outcome in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, she never said she was a deist at, at, yeah. at least. Temporary God. She said she said from a deistic perspective. Yeah. We're no, talking about a deist. Said if if a deity could be demonstrated, it doesn't No, you're you're listen, dude, anything. Proteus. Proteus. Did you watch the whole interchange? No, I'm just talking about that instance. Okay. Well, not that that doesn't matter because she made some reference to her having some form of deism, and then she kept on flipping back and forth between that and atheism, temporal agnosticism. She was a complete flip-flopping, contradicting train wreck last night. Oh, well, that clip didn't demonstrate. I thought you were talking about that yeah, clip did. specifically. He asked her if she was a deist, and then she answered, yeah, well, you could say that I'm in a philosophical sense. You probably get me temporal there. agnostic. Notice, I want you guys to notice one key thing that she said. She goes, I would worship him. Now, this is this is something that comes out of the mouth of many of the YouTube atheists that are dealing with. They all have a, a visceral despisement of the God of the Bible. And they do not want to worship him. In other words, I will not surrender. This is their true motivation. They want, they do not want to submit to God's sovereignty, which is, which is asinine because if God is sovereign, how can you resist his sovereignty? It's utter foolishness. It's the most foolish thing in the universe to do that. I'm going to look for where she's... But her ultimacy, you see, her God is uh, cheesecake. She says her ultimacy is she licks cheesecake. That's a direct quote. Well, if someone answered with that kind of, that I would say that they just did not take the conversation seriously. Yeah, I didn't just drop in you know, like Mary Poppins with an umbrella. She was asked if she wanted to come in and have a dialogue and debate with me because the previous scheduled person could not show up. 
and she knew very well what to to expect. That I'm a I'm a, I'm a vigorous debater. Okay. Oh, she already knew who you were and everything. Absolutely. She she's even publicly requested that I uh, come on to some YouTube channels and dialogue with her. Which YouTube channel did you request this on? I don't, I don't remember, but I was in the audience listening. And I, in fact, I wrote to her. Um, in fact, in one text chat, she made the same remark. Um, Oh, I, I, I've been trying to get in touch with you, blah, blah, blah. I want you to come on my show. And I said, yeah, I, I said, I'm on Discord every day. You know, I'm on the server. And I said, I'm not hard to find. You're welcome to come on and tape and talk to me, whatever. Doesn't want to. What she wants to do is she only wants to have an interaction where she tightly controls it. And she showed it by her extreme, rude, and obnoxious behavior that she was going to control the conversation by not only refusing to answer many of the questions, but trying in a passive aggressive uh, sociopathic way of trying to make me look like I'm some psychological conniver. It was disgusting. <clears throat> Which is ironic that she's accusing you of controlling the conversation when that's exactly what she was trying she, to do. That's a, if you watch the videotape, that's exactly what she was doing. She was being manipulative. She was she was playing the victim card that I'm, I'm some Machiavellian um, Svengali trying to trick her and all that kind of stuff. All of my questions are very straightforward, philosophical and theological question. Anyone who knows Darth knows he's no Machiavelli. That's right. That's not, that's, it's, isn't it Machiavelli? Oh, uh, well, whatever. Supreme Leader, I, I like that, too, that you're posting Tupac in Church of Darth. Very holy. I think he's a bit overrated. He definitely is, but I like a couple of his songs. I posted that clip of Berlin, the one of my, that clip we were talking about the other day, or yes, I think it was yesterday about. Okay, I found the direct clip. Hold on one second. You know, some people thought he was alive, but he's most certainly dead. He died of lead poisoning. Here we go. Oh my goodness. It goes right Are you afraid to defend your atheism? Particularly on YouTube, you know, uh, proclaiming your. I'm not hearing anything. Didn't hear that? Uh, I heard part of it. All right. Well, that's where she exactly said that. Colloquially, she atheist, philosophically. Oh. Uh, temporal agnostic. <laughs> what, what does that even mean? I know, it's right here. And well, your position I would assume temporal atheist would oh be definitionally... Right Are you afraid to defend chat, your atheism? I mean, I don't no, regularly on YouTube, you know, uh, proclaiming you're an atheist. So I am. Are, you still, are you still an atheist? Yes, I would say colloquially, yes, but philosophically, I'm more of a temporal agnostic. Okay, well, I... I <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of BS that was. That's it. Right around the... Uh, right I understood it. The I actually understood I'm a, I'm yeah, a temporal agnostic. I, mean, I don't know like, what, what like your I, problem like is. I, I can say I'm colloquially an asshole. I'm not literally an asshole. <laughs> like That's essentially what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think you guys are being a bit too hard on her, you know? Distinction between colloquially and no, temporal. not at all. Just, just piece it no, together. Not at all. Just piece it together. Not at all. We're not being hard on her at all. <laughs> colloquially, yes. Temporally, not. Nah, she deserves the criticism. No, no. Colloquially, no, I know. Yes. I was, I was philosophically, joking. not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, philosophically. Mm. What was even more shocking than her? Well, we got to put it philosophically really or temporally because she is temporally agnostic too beforehand. So what mean. was even what was more shocking to me was all of the comments in the uh, comment section on on the YouTube channel. These people who delusionally thought that uh, you know she was victorious. It's just like, what were you smoking last night? I mean, well, definitely the, people will the, do that with any debate. Like, look no, at the debate between Craig and Hitchens. Are. People think that Hitchens won that debate. There's people who think that. But Craig slapped him around like a little boy, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's, it depends on where the bar is for victory, right? Yeah, well, that's why Craig slapped him around so much. That's why his earpiece came out during the Q&A session. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it's not that it came out. It's he got slapped around so much he got dizzy. He thought it came out. I see. I seem to become unwired. The it's not like a Dragon Ball Z bar hit you in the head. It's not in the and then it hits you. It's like, no, no, it's right there in your ear. You're still okay. It's not even about the VAR. It's they want to move the VAR when it's most convenient for them and then say that, that because they moved the VAR, that's victory. No, they you see, you'll, notice, the you'll, you'll notice that this is an extremely common tactic with most atheists. Craig answer, a, answers a direct question, and he just filibusters. Craig says, well, you, you, you're not really being clear here. So which is your position? Do you affirm God does not exist? Do you affirm what classically is called agnosticism? Or do you hold to, you know, theological non-cognitivism, cognitivism, that, that God is not meaningful or intelligible, the word God is meaningful and intelligible? And Hitchens just verbally imploded. He just, he was in, incoherent. Craig goes, I need an answer to this. I'm waiting. Like watch, gonna, Caddyshack. Gonna, watch, he's going to be uh, waiting for a long time. He's still waiting. Watch, for to do it. watch, Eli. Uh, <laughs> how do you say Eli's last name? Ayaya. Ayala. 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 Okay. Ayala. Okay. Watch Eli's Ayala's interchange with Cirrus the skeptic. It's on Eli's channel, right? And. And you'll, you'll, you'll see how Eli is being very precise. He's being very clear, very academic in his presentation. And watch Cirrus. Every single time Cirrus responded, Cirrus w was just throwing out monologues. He, w he wasn't responding specifically to what Eli says. He was just it was doing tr it was it was it was just a wall of words, as Parakeet says. It just it was it was just boilerplate. It was boilerplate crap. Just watch it because this is a quintessential example of how atheists respond. They make a pretense of how they're responding to you. See, this is why I don't generally uh, like formal debates. I'm not opposed right. to them, but it's because when you get into formal debates with atheists, this is the crap that they always pull. I responded, but I didn't really answer. You responded. You gave a response, but it wasn't germane to my actual question. <laughs> and also watch Eli's interchange with Eric Permboy and Murphy. It was fantastic. He does the he really he, he does the same he does the same thing. And when Eli says, "Well, you have no way to ground universals," but and then Eli responded to something to the effect that we could ground universals in a universal mind, right? Now, the, the moment he said that, immediately Eric Permboy Murphy got crude and nasty and says, yeah, I could pull Bigfoot out of my ass. Now, now, why the emotional reaction? Why? It's because Eric Permboy Murphy does not simply have a lack of belief in God because he's unpersuaded. He's actually committed that... God does not exist, and he has absolutely disgust and antipathy for the idea that there is a God, especially the God of the Bible. Because if he doesn't have that attitude, why did he react with such hostility when Eli says we could ground universals in a universal mind? Yeah, why didn't you just give an actual alternative? Darth, well, is this the video that, that you guys are talking about right now? There is a universal mind, as opposed, and that's why he was presupposing Bigfoot. Or whatever. How do you get? Key. No, no. He said, he said, I could pull Eli out of my ass. Big no, the, this uh, prophet. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. You need to go on to uh, what's 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 e what's Eli's um, revealed apologetics. Revealed apologetics. Revealed, I'll, I'll revealed, apolog channel, yeah. Re revealed apologetics. Go on there. Watch Eli's interchange. Now, my only problem I have with Eli, all right, is that he needs to be more polemical when he's dealing with these people rather than be more, more professorial. Okay. Other than that, Eli's presentation, Eli is a very, very sharp thinker. I have a lot of respect for him. I don't really you love that? You don't you love that perm on Eric Permboy? It's not as perm as it used to be though. 
You know, yeah. I think it's well, a little yeah, down tone perm. Well, it's not as those perms cost a lot of money. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. a Jerry. By, girl, you guys by the way, one of, you know what? You know what? One of his Discord usernames is. Nah. Thanks, John. No Suave Wolf. Suave Wolf. Wow. He Rico thinks suave. he's suave. Rico Suave. Yeah, he thinks he's yeah. suave. Rico Suave. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's not like, cool. I mean, he's got a good radio voice, man. I mean, the guy's got a good golden thread. Very edgy. What does Eli yeah. do for a um? Like, what does he do in real he, life? He, 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 he teaches he at a Christian school. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And he, okay. he's a youth director. I'm friends with him. I'm in direct contact with him. So if anyone needs anything set up with him, I can set you up with him. But he, he let me know like a day before. And he's like, hey, Eric Murphy. You know, I knew who Eric Murphy was. He goes, he wants to have a dialogue with me. You know, I said, yeah, you can do it. And then he's like, well, we haven't made any schedule yet. And then he just uh, let me know on Friday. He said, hey, he wants to do his like. Within like three hours, I said, "Yeah, do it. You're you're prepared." So he's not going to be prepared for you, but do it anyway. I mean, because <laughs> I know Eli's very see competent. Eli. What Eli needs to understand, mm -hmm. as well as other people, um, is that unless you really dumb it down, they will pretend like they're understanding, and then they will pretend like they're responding. Well, I had to they talk don't. About for Eli because he said, "Hey, man, ever since I, you know, talked to you, when you use the two sides of the page, he goes, now I got it. I'll just, you know, keep viewing it from that paradigm.' I go, yeah, exactly. That's what you do. Just let them lay out their side of the page. Let you, you know, they let them <laughs> let you lay out your side of the page. Now you gotta, you gotta tussle them out. But at least, you know, and he, he like, I like using his phraseology. Just show me all your cards. We show you all our cards. You show us all your cards." Yeah, play. but they got no cards. That's well, not to show them. Well, I mean, they have to lay it out. Otherwise, you're just being obtuse and you see, not you engaging see the, in the debate. You know, the, you see the atheists hands. think the atheists uh, think like Paul Newman in Cool Hand Luke, where he says, "Sometimes having nothing is a real cool hand." Yeah. Well, when you said the "we're waiting," I was uh, going to pull up. You know, Kate uh, Caddyshack. When uh, Ted Knight is sitting there going, well, we're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was fantastic he was in that fantastic movie. fantastic in that movie. All the way through the beginning to end, man. It's like, you'll get nothing to like Wait, it. I just looked up that movie. That movie was in 1967. Come on, I ain't heard of that. Oh, Cool Hand Luke is from 67, yeah. Cool Hand Luke is a, yeah. it, cool Hand Luke is a classic. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a must-watch movie in terms of a classic movie, right? list. Billiard movie, no, right? no, 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 no. Cool Hand Luke, yeah. he gets drunk and he rips the head off of parking meters and he gets sent to, I believe, yeah. a Georgia pr prison gang. And uh, it's, 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 uh, yeah, I think he, I think he's okay. in that one. Yeah, I'm um, yeah. But Paul Newman was in various films. Yeah. Cool Hand Luke was, it's just, a, it's a phenomenal movie. I don't like the ending, mm -hmm. but it's a great, it's a great movie. Yeah. James Kennedy won uh, Best Supporting Actor. And by the way, I, well, you a lot of you guys would recognize it, but many of the cast are in there were famous movie and television actors. There's Wayne Rogers there in the left-hand corner there. Uh, the guy in the, r the lower right-hand corner, I forget what his name is. He's a very famous actor. He just died. The guy right above Paul Newman in the center, that looks like Joe Don Baker. A lot, a lot of famous people in that movie. And I don't know any of them. That's because you're young, not old like me. If you watch the movie, guys, and I highly recommend that you watch it, just wait till the line where he goes, I'm shaking it here, boss. I'm shaking it. <laughs> Might have to because last time you recommended me a movie, I really liked which one was that? Seven. Like this is a long time ago. Seven. Yeah, it's it's a gruesome movie, but the the plot is just unbelievable, and the ending. Oh, when Kevin Spacey goes, oh, he didn't know. Oh, oh, he didn't know. Don't give it. Don't give any spoilers. That is probably one of the biggest surprises I've ever had in movies. Okay. Yeah. Great performances all around, obviously. I mean, that's just a no brainer. I mean, you have that's a given. Yeah, Brad Pitt Brad. was great. Morgan Freeman was great. Kevin Spacey was great. The, sl 
Oh man, you said no spoilers. Prophet, weren't you? Aren't Prophet? I remember I was in. You were in the dude. This is a long time ago. Like this was like a couple months back, bro. You were there. You remember? You remember. We were talking about it. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. I, this is when Pepe was still. Is there. it? Is there anybody in here who has not seen Godfather one and two? Uh, I haven't seen them. F- I, yeah. If I have, I don't remember them. Oh, they're yeah, good. You should watch. I've seen them, but it's been like way too. Long. They're good they're movies. Good. I prefer good one movie? over two. Okay. Well, they're a little bit. They're a little bit different because two is telling the backstory. You know. Yeah, I mean, I like Vito Corleone a lot. Like uh, Vito. You know, the original Brando. Yeah. Brando, yeah. Yeah, Brando. But then I also like I like Robert De Niro in two when he shows the backstory of how he became this you know tough mob boss. It's it's a good movie, Jonathan. You should watch it's it. It's the only movie and sequel that won back to back best movie Oscar. Mm. You guys watch much no. TV shows, or do you guys watch more movies? No, no. I watch. I, I mean, I'm younger, so I'm more of the generation that watches streaming. How old are you? So yeah, twenty eight. Yeah, you're younger. I, mean, I, I, I hate. I hate most of the uh, dramas and sitcoms that are on TV today. Mm. Well, well, if you even, have Netflix, even older, even older sitcoms don't even hold up like nowadays, like compared to what's out there now. And then I look back on like old sitcoms; yeah. they just don't hold up. They're not as good as we thought they were. Well, I can totally think that, right. Yeah. There's no Archie Bunker today, man. Archie <laughs> Bunker was a riot, even though I hated Norman Lear. <laughs> Archie was fantastic. Archie Bunker, man. Archie says to his son-in-law, he goes. Let me spell it out for you. F A G fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Meathead. <laughs> Wait, Duncan, do you have your own Discord? Yes, but I, I don't currently use it. Archie says to his son in law, because he's carrying a, a men's European handbag, and he says it makes him look. He goes, Archie, he goes, Do you think it makes me look like a woman? And Archie turns to him and says, If the purse fits. I was that gonna say was the start. the Witcher on Netflix is pretty good. Little and it's a, it's a lot like Game of Thrones in that it has a lot of you know nudity and stuff. Dude, come on! It has that's all it has in Game of Thrones. Someone's saying that the Vikings is back on. Is that like I didn't hear one episode of that? Say that again, Rise. Vikings that show. I've um, never seen it. it. I know of uh, it. It was like a history. Anybody yeah. watch The Irishman? No, I haven't. I was actually going to watch that with a friend, but I never got around to it. Like, uh, I know it's, 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 it's long. Episode. You better be prepared for a long movie. It's a good Listen, movie, but it's long. Listen, yeah, I watched I wasn't prepared and I, for it. I started it like at 11 o'clock and I was like, fuck, it's already three in the morning. No, 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 no. You, you don't start that late watching that movie. Dude, uh, Listen, I sat down and I sat through Schindler's List, okay? And I only had to get up like two times. So I think I'll be I think I'll be fine. Um What's his face? De Niro was he was good. Pesci was great. Um let's see who else? Uh, Are you talking about Pacino, the was, was, Pacino was great in it. Pesci oh, does not play a crazy character in this movie. He plays a he plays a very low key, methodical mobster, and he's excellent. Uh, there's another part in there. Harvey Keitel. He plays another mobster. Brilliant performance, although he wasn't on the camera long. But uh, I would say all in all, it's a, it's a pretty good movie. Just just a little bit too long. That's all. Yeah, yeah I think the Irish my mind that Joe Pesci was as calm and like cerebral as he was in that. Movie. Yeah, he especially was, when he, you see Goodfellas. Yeah, oh, I know. By the way, the real person that Joe Pesci played in Goodfellas was a guy by the name of Tommy. Um, what was his name? Tommy something. He was actually very tall, and he was actually much more crazy than the Joe Pesci character. Yeah, apparently he even, after he killed one of the guys, he actually called his mother to apologize because <laughs> he felt bad. Like, he he was just so wild and so no, wild. I never, I, never, I never heard that. I'm not saying it's not true, but I never heard that. But he, he was so crazy, and somebody that he killed, the guy who he killed in the bar scene, 
Pesci killed a guy who was drunk making fun of him for shining shoes. And that's an actual true story. And the guy they killed was a made man in the mob. In other words, you, you can't touch him unless the higher ups give you the authorization to whack him. Well, they killed him. And John Gotti killed um, the Joe Pesci character. Tommy, it's like it's Tommy, somebody looked that up. It's Tommy Tucson or something like that. Tommy D. Simone. D. Simone. Thank you. Tommy D. Simone. Yeah. He was a crazy dude. You know what's funny? I remember it right as I was warming up pizza. <laughs> Tommy D. Simone. He would, he made the Joe Pesci character seem sane. Ugh. Funny how? Funny how? Like, why am I funny? I'm here. I'm here to fucking amuse you. Is that what a you're saying? Am I a clown to you? <laughs> I'm here to amuse you. Is that it? That was ad lib, by the way. Yeah, I I didn't know that actually, but it makes sense. Some of the greatest movie lines of all time have been ad libbed. That's correct. Yep. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, just, just do me a favor. Just let the cool it on the uh, F. All right, I'll drop those, or not, not drop those. <laughs> yeah, I think Pesci's an underrated actor. To be fair, the movies I've seen him in, he seems kind of one-dimensional. Like I don't see him really play like um. He seems good at like being witty and being intense, but not so much as like plain vulnerable. He his performance his of performance Vinny? in he was great in that. His performance in The Irishman is really good. He's very good in the movie. I'm halfway through that movie, so I'll finish the other half. There's one scene in, uh, where uh, one mobster approaches Joe Pesci. Um, I'm trying to remember what it, Joe Pesci's character name was. And he just looks at the Irishman, just gives him this look. And he doesn't say a word. And you can just see in his eyes, kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I love my cousin Vinny. After the prosecutor makes his uh, opening statement, he just gets up and goes, everything you said was BS. <laughs> I rest. <laughs> you know, I'm done. <laughs> Fred Gwynn was great. Oh, he was fantastic at that, man. Yeah. But that's his like, whole opening statement. Everything he said was BS. The end. Yeah. Do you know who's, it, if you if you watch yeah. the Irishman, if you watch the Irishman, the one character you want to pay attention to is Pro. He's another mobster. His name is something Provenzano. He's actually a British actor, but he has a he has like a perfect New York accent, and he's phenomenal in the movie. He gets into an altercation with uh, uh, Al Pacino playing uh, Jimmy Hoffa, and he's just he's he's phenomenal. Yeah, I gotta say though, Eric was a little bit more personable in his uh, discussion with Eli. I mean, it was kind of like he sounds like a cool guy to talk to if you just get him off his show where he has to make a public sort of thing. He's a little bit more that, that, dude in the dialogue with Eli. That's because it wasn't a call. In, that's because yeah, it wasn't a yeah. call-in show, yeah. and e Eli was not in any way confrontational. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I thought it was so sort of funny when uh, you know Eric was just like. No. And both of them bust out laughing, you know, and he's like, oh, really? That's not the best you have. I mean, come on, give me something more substantial. Eric, but I, Eric, so Eric is a clown. He's a clown and he has a grotesquely overly inflated ability of his own intellect. He's, True. He's, he's, he's got an he's, ego. He has an ego. Definitely. But in, I, I in all in all mm, capital letters. Yeah. He would bring well, I, I, I thought it was funny when he bust out laughing at certain points. He has a sense of humor. He knows when he's 
trying to be a little egoish and no, he couldn't really keep it up. I mean, Eli just has that uh, ability on people to just go, yeah, you're not really holding up your own end of the bargain. I, I just listen. I just I don't I don't I don't approach these people in an academic way because I know that they're all just liars, right? Right? They, 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 it, their position is not that they lack belief in God. This is a, an absolute lie. Yeah. Every single one of them. I'll get Eli to be a good hybrid between you and me. So he's going to be like right in the middle there. So. Well, he, just yeah. just give Eli more time, a lot more abuse for internet atheists, and he'll turn into the monster that I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I mean, he knows where to be cutthroat, you know. He knows where, where the where the edge is, you know, the draw blood, and he he'll he'll perk them, you know. He's just not doing it that prolifically yet, but he can he can he can sting them pretty good, you know. See, I'm not under the illusion that you know they they just have to be educated on this issue. They have to be they have to be pushed well, into the corner of the absurdity of their position. True. Well, I mean, he had to teach them blatantly in two separate issues on. Uh, d- number one, the Trinity, because he got the Trinity wrong. So his you know supposedly what? Calvary I, I, Chapel I, education didn't. I still have to listen to that. He didn't know the difference between an internal. Yeah, he didn't know between uh, uh, internal critique and an external critique. One's valid, one's invalid. He had no clue. And Eli had to bring up twice to him. He said, it's illegitimate for you to make an external critique. It's illegitimate. You know, and he, that's why I had a, you know, we had a debrief on it when I brought up yesterday. I said, when you bring that up to them, you have to show them why it's illegitimate. It's begging the question from their own perspective. They're assuming what they need to prove yet, and they're strumming in their opponent. Maybe when your did this take place? That. that was on, um, I think it was on Friday. Friday evening at 6? It was on the 10th. Okay, so, t- okay, so yeah, just a couple of days 10th. ago. Yeah, yeah. It was on Friday, January 10th, yeah. Two days ago. Yep. It was very impromptu because he let me know like three hours beforehand. He's like... He just invited me to go on like at six o'clock tonight. I said, "Oh, do it! It's within three hours. You can do it. No problem." So it was very off the cuff for him because he knew he was going to engage him, but he didn't know how soon. Then all of a sudden, boom! It came up. He like had an opening window. He said, "Hey, you want to do a hangout tonight on my channel? Let's do it." You know, I said, "Yeah, you're prepared, dude. You <laughs> you know a lot more than me on some things. I know a little bit more than you on some things, but yeah, you're, you're fine." But I gave him some self-criticism there. I said, you know, because Eric wasn't really getting it. Like, you have to bring it up twice to him why an external critique is illegitimate. Then you need to lay out the logical fallacy so he actually gets it. Um, yeah. Next time you talk with the E, I recommend uh, or pass on a copy of The Myth of Religious Neutrality by Clouser. Yeah. Well, I, I've already had uh, – well, I mean, he, he knows of you, Dar. Uh, I laid out that well. I mean, he's he's more of the Doria Verdian uh, perspective because okay. yeah. When you look at Clauser's lectures, like that, he appears at Doria Verd, and what? he brings up Van Til. So obviously, these guys were these guys knew each other. They disagreed on some things. Come from the presuppositional perspective, what? yeah. So there's right. Doria Verd. Doria Verd is brought up in Van Til's apologetic of what his philosophy was. What? And I understand their perspective. Not it. We kind of agree. Clauser like nails the point of the head there myth of religious neutrality we totally agree there it's ferreting those things out a little bit further where you get you know separation between dory beardian perspective and van tillian right and, yeah so i, I actually, actually I'm, ta- I'm talking about the aspect where he emphasizes the absolute everybody has a uh-huh. commitment yeah to that something that's an absolute whether they realize it or not yeah I use you know, the, it's I expressed use the, in different terms yeah i i use the transcendental ultimate you know the ultimate transcendental because there's transcendentals to all different kinds of things. Cause I can use the narrow scope of much more broad scope and say the broadest of the broad. We just say, we got all these different transcendentals, the preconditions for this, you took it away. You don't have the, uh, the consequent. Now we're saying what's the transcendental of all transcendentals. What's the ultimate? It's the ultimate transcendental, the ground of all being the personal absolute. Exactly. Et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And same thing with the worldview. I was laying out, you can use, System. He likes to use system, system, paradigm, web of beliefs. Uh, you know, a whole bunch of other terms you can you can lay out. Framework. You know, uh, network. Okay, we're all talking about the the you know paradigm, but from which you're working uh, to make things make sense in. So that's what we're talking about here. Yet it's got to be grounded in, in one ultimate. One yeah, I, I like I like to mention yeah. with people, you know, what is it that grounds all possibility and impossibility? Right. 
if if it's not the God of the Bible, then what then what is it? Because if you don't identify it, then in your system, uh, contingency is ultimate. Chance is ultimate. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, I, in when I use the two sides of the page, the Christians start with the ontological tree and argue argue it henceforth, encapsulating everything. Go back to I go back with, two sentences because yeah. I didn't I didn't get it. Oh sure. Well, you you know when I use the two sides of the page, you know, take two sides or take a page, divide it in half, put the Christian on one side, put the opponent on the other side. The Christian side is arguing from the transcendental to the things they experience. The other side saying, I got these things they experience down to this ultimate that has a circle with a big question mark on it. So we're arguing two different directions. Exactly. Is that exactly what's happening? So they're but like, they don't, they don't, they don't, <clears throat> they don't, they, they don't have an ultimate to appeal to. Right. Well, because either, they, either they will say, I don't know. Yeah. Or whatever an ultimate that they try to invoke, there would be no way for them to know of it. So well, ultimately, what, they're going to be left with a chance system. Right. Well, if they don't identify, it's merely, as Van Til said, the mere formal claim that there's absolute truth. We may not know what it is. Maybe there, maybe no one can know for sure. But there has to be ultimate truth. It's merely the formal claim. It's contentless. That's why Van Til appeals to a concrete universal. Opposed to that, the mere formal claim. I think right. that's where we dis disagree with. Um, it wasn't Bonvink. Um It was uh, some other guy, not some other reformed theologian. Just is that how you claim. say it? you say it's Bavink? Bavink, yeah. I don't think it was Bavink. Uh, it was someone else. I can never, I can never get th th that name right. Yeah, let me look at my notes. <laughs> I'll pull up the name. It wasn't Bavink, but it was some. I'm not questioning your pronunciation. It's just that I always botch it. Yeah, uh, I had to learn that one. Same, same way with Doria Veard. Well, same thing with uh, Principia or Principia, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, that really threw me for a loop. I'm like, yeah. what's he saying there? You know? Yeah. But um, I, I remember him bringing that up uh, versus one other guy, you know, where they were dealing with like natural theology and stuff like that. and or It's just merely the mere formal claim, but it's contentless. It's not concrete. It's merely, yo, the whole knowledge is absolutely true. Don't know what it is. Don't know if anyone can know for sure, but there has to be. But it's nothing uh, contextual or contentful. It's contentless. And um, he's not merely appealing to the empty claim of, uh, uh, of faith. It's a faith that's concrete. We actually have information, content, ontological trinity. That's what we're starting from. The circle is filled. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When you even challenge their commitment to the causal principle and the uniformity of nature, they're like apoplectic. Like, right. what are you? Why, why are you doing that? They want they want you to grant. They want you to simply implicitly grant these fundamentals. Well, why, why should I? Yeah. <laughs> you well, need like, to point yeah, that out rub. in the debate so they don't get lost. Yeah. Hey, Especially dog. There's one thing they can get you on. Foundationalism. Yeah. yeah. There's one thing they can get you on, and that's the creator creator distinction. Well, that's that's just ridiculous because I the reason why I the reason why I say the creator creation distinction is because that will be more um they'll they'll grasp that more than they will the creator creature distinction. No, I was joking with you because you yeah, said creator creator. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh! I thought you. Okay, I misheard you. Okay, yeah, that I I do that every time I'm tired. I'll I'll say the creator creator distinction rather than the creator creature distinction or creator creation distinction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's even more terms for worldview, network, web, system, paradigm, outlook, lens, interpretive grid, matrix. You can use all these terms to describe the yep. the framework. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you what are you reading from? Just me. That my notes. Yeah, my notes. Yeah, that, those are those word. are all all word, all words that all point to the same basic concept. Exactly right. Yeah, just different terms for the same thing. So, but you know, he likes to use system, and he kind of uses it like a lot there. I'm like, you can change up your terminology, you know, <laughs> just to get so they get the gist of it, you know. Now that way, it's not merely like you know ad nauseum, you know, system, system, system. We, we yeah, agree. Just, just, that code look, see, you know. Yeah. Look, uh, this is why I try to get it, or you know. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in causality and 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 laws of nature? Are these ultimate and absolute in and of themselves? Do they secure themselves, or is, there, or is there something that secures that? Which is which is it? And if they go, well, I don't know. Say, okay, good. So, in other words, what you think is continuity could simply be the illusion of a chance world. 
Correct. That's pure tychism. That's uh, uh, Pierce's uh, pragmatist uh, view. Everything was chance. And it's from the Greek, uh, I forget what the actual Greek term is, but it's uh, tychism. It's what he called his philosophy. Tychism, everything's chance. No, no, nothing's really novel. Or how it turns into novel, uh, from novel. See, when they talk of, when they talk, when, is unanswered. Yeah. When they extol science, then they're, they're, they're appealing to an ultimate. But then when you inquire whether the laws of nature